Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now yes, today I'm going to be um, doing something which I've always kind of wanted to do on my channel, um, like ever since I've really like, got into this band. Um, I'm going to be ranking XTC Studio albums today. So yeah, um, out of like all of the ones like which I've done, like in like this like we series, like I've like I've ranked like Elvis Costello, Paul Weller, Pink Floyd, and um, XTC were probably the most difficult one to actually rank. Be not because like, there's a ton of albums here, because they only have 14 studio albums, but because most of them are all very, 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 very good albums. So it was quite hard to be subjective like about it, like thinking like what makes like this album like stronger like than like another one. Um like but I have come up like with a list like which I've kind of been tweaking like over like the last few weeks, like but I am um like relatively happy like with like the order like which is in. But like I said, like just be like aware, like I mean like this will like um this is all kind of like subject to change like everyone. Like there's not really like a general consensus just like as far like as like, what XCC's um like true best album is like and like that's like the beauty like of like the band because everyone's like has got their own personal favourites. So yeah we'll just get stuck right in with number 14. Which for me would be their second album called Go To from 1978. So I would say XCC don't have don't have very many bad albums. I would say this is the only one I would say is a bad album. Definitely this was a rushed job, sort of like rushed job sort of second album for them. Like a lot of like sort of like punk and like new wave bands that probably like the main one like I'm thinking of like I'm thinking of like is like the jam like where they have quite a good um, promising uh, debut album. However, for the second album, they're, they're under sort of pressure touring-wise. Like, touring-wise, they don't really have much time to sort of, like, um, write and, like, record, like, new songs. It ends up, this album, basically being, like, a slightly watered-down version, like, of the first album. There's no real um, standout tracks, like, on it, like, on it, like, on it, like, there's no singles taken from the album. So, yeah, it is a little bit weaker, this one. And, like, unfortunately, it also features songs, um, a couple of tracks written by the keyboard player, Barry Andrews, which are slightly questionable. So, yeah, uh, go to um, not one which would be far from the first XCC record, which I would, right, recommend, comes in at number 14. Okay, and then we go back a couple of months to their first album, which was called White Music, and this is um, a pretty solid debut album from XTC. I mean, it's not brilliant. It's certainly not as sort of like musically advanced like as like, some of like their later works, but you know they do show a lot of promise on air. Like there's some great tracks such as Radios in Motion, This Is Pop, Statue of Liberty. You know, like what well, just are like really good like sort of like power pop sort of singles. And um, unfortunately, though, there is a little bit like. A filler like on here like color molding songs like um aren't quite up to the same standard like as partridges like on here and plus you get a slightly questionable cover like of bob dylan's all along the watchtower so yeah far from a masterpiece but a solid debut record though nonetheless white music from 1978 and there we go a bit further forward in time to my number 12 choice to the mid 80s where XTC like recorded like under like a pseudonym like so like an alter ego band called Dukes of Stratosphere and this was their first release set uh, called 25 o'clock now I, now I think the reason why this one falls a little bit on the lower end of the list is because this isn't a full album like there's only six tracks in here plus it's very sort of like reminiscent like of like sort of psychedelic rock rock like from the 60s like so it does sort of have like this sort of like um like sort of like tongue-in-cheek like kind of sound to it um like which definitely was like the intention like XCC like we, XCC were like kind of like not wanting to be themselves like on this album album Bummer. They were very much like paying homage to their heroes like from the 60s. Um, but for me though, um, a oh, good record, there are some great songs on it. Like I really love like My Love Explodes, What in the World and Your Gold Dress are all really, really, really great tracks. Um, it's just a little bit short, like off like material. Um, and like, it's actually quite like ironic as well that this actually sold better than better than XCC's last two albums, Mama and The and The Big Express. But yeah, Jukes of Jasper, 25 o'clock, comes in at number 12. Begins in the 
next one on my list is probably going to be one of the more controversial placings and um, because this one just misses out like on the top 10 coming in at number 11 is their third album drums and wires here so i know a lot of people say this is their favorite xcc record and i mean i can see why it's just kind of like a sort of transitional al album for them you know like they've got rid of barry andrews and like and like, and like they brought in like guitarist and arranger dave gregory who really like advances xcc sort of sounds like and uh, like arrangement like along a lot and um, but i would say the real star of the show for this album is colin molding who not only contributes to two singles um from the album making person nigel and life begins at the hop but also some really great album cuts such as 10 feet tall and that is the way however partridge like not wishing to be outdone like also contributes some great tracks such as helicopter rose Roads Grundle, The Globe, uh, Real by Real. Yeah, there's just a lot of right, really good, really great stuff in here. Um, there are a couple like off. There are a couple like of like weaker tracks again. In like my opinion, Scissor Man. I've never been big on that song. And also, I know this is going to be a really unpopular opinion, but for me, complicated game like always has been a little bit forced. I saw like the angst in that song, like to my ears, like anyway. Although I know a lot of people really rate that song highly. Like that's among the Gets to Seas like most popular songs like on Spotify. Like that one, complicated game. But for me, like yeah, um, still a great album. The drums are why. Why it's definitely one of like, the classic albums from 1979. Just for XCC's whole discography does fall slightly towards the end, like off the list for me. And then just entering into the top 10, we get the second release from the Dukes of Stratosphere, which is called a uh, Sonic Sunspot here. So yeah, this is a more kind of developed, like full album like by the Dukes and, and Dukes, and like it doesn't sort of have like a sort of solely psychedelic sound like 25 o'clock did. Like on here, like there's um, like tracks which pay homage to the Hollies, the Beach Boys, kind of like even sort of like sort of vaudevillian music hall. Um, like and like yeah, like I mean like the lyrics and that like are sort of um, um, are sort of like the sort of very sort of sixties like sort of quite like quite abstract like I mean like they can sound a little bit forced like in places but you know the actual music like on here like is just great like it is it, just great like it was really sort of like out of step like out of step like with what was going on like in the eighties but that means it really hasn't dated and like I would say like if I'm in the mood like for sort of sixties sort of psychedelic rock music this was actually one of the first albums which I would go to which is a bit ironic considering that it came out in 1987 but yeah um sonic sunspot here from the jukes of stratosphere um yeah we're coming at number 10 okay now we're at number nine now i know um my good friend uh, James Lobbins not going to be too pleased that this one is um, not even begin like my top five because I believe this is his favourite XTC album. But for me, number nine is going to go to Apple Venus Volume One here. So yeah, I would say for any other artist, this would be their masterpiece, a sort of career highlight, and um, the album like for like any other band. Um, but for XTC, you know, um, this does fall like around the middle, like off their discography for me. The album starts off incredible, like with like sort of like River of Orchids, I'd like that, Easter Theatre, three classic 10 out of 10 tracks for me will rank among XCC's best work. Unfortunately, it just doesn't sort of sustain like that super high level like of quality. Like I'm not a massive fan of Nights in Shining Karma, uh, um, Your Dictionary, or um, Harvest Festival, and like Moulding's tracks, and um, like maybe aren't quite as good as some of like the masterpieces like he was able to come up with um, in the 80s. But you know, this is still a great record. There's such a sort of like continuity like to like the sound and like mood like of the album. Um, so yeah, um, App Apple Venus comes in at number nine. Okay, now at number eight, another one which maybe people might be surprised that this is a little bit lower um, like on my list, but I've gone for the 1992 release, Non Such here. Now, this is also another great, great album, you know, like yeah, for any other band, this would be a this would be like a career highlight, but but for XCC, um, it, it does fall like around this position. It's a very long album, this is it's got 17 tracks on it, and although there are some absolute classics on it, such as like uh, Battle of the Peter Pumpkinhead. Dear Madden Barnum, I've always loved, and um, The Disappointed, um, Rook, That Way, Then She Appeared, Wrapped in Grey. There's some masterpieces. This 
uh, there are a couple like off like slightly weaker filler tracks for me, such as um, I, I'd say I'd say like it's I'd say like it's Colin Moulding songs. Unfortunately, what that lists album down a little bit. The smartest monkeys, War Dance, and Bungalow, um, and like even there, like I'm not massive fan of Books or Burning either. Um, or um, so the one like Humble Daisy like is a little bit like sort of like weaker. But apart from those songs, like, I mean like if like you sort of like pair this down to maybe about a really good 12 track single album, you would have definitely among like their like top five albums here. Like as it is though, it is just sort of very dense. It's packed with ideas and like it is still a great, great, great listen. And um, it's just it's just maybe like a little bit like inconsistent compared to some of their other albums. But yeah, still a great piece of work here though. Non such comes in at number eight. Okay, and now at number seven on my list, and um, one which maybe a few people might be surprised at how high I've actually put this, but I think this is a really underrated, underappreciated album, like even among XCC's fans, it is The Big Express from 1984. So yeah, I just think this album has a great sort of consistent mood to it you know it's very sort of like industrial again very dense production like on it but the song quality like is like very consistent like it's not a very long al al album this is only like 11 tracks of it like so and um, the songs especially like I especially like I would say the second side is just really really consistent like great quality like melody great hooks like throughout like the album so yeah um like I mean it's maybe dated a little bit like it's probably the, it's probably like the most 80s sounding album like which have they done but it is the song quality and like the lyrics as well what really make this record stand out for me so yeah favorite tracks there probably would be uh, this world over you're the wish you are i had and a uh, train running low on soul cold so yeah that's the big express comes in at number seven And then we look at their last album of the 80s, number six is Oranges and Lemons. Now this for me was a real grower like of an album, like I mean it isn't one which I would have maybe quite had as high as this like on my list, like probably like I wouldn't have ever dreamed that I could have put as high as Nonsuch or like Apple Leaders Volume 1 when I first got it. But you know this is a real grower like of an album, again it's quite a long one, there's about 15 tracks here but I think it is a bit more consistent than Nonsuch is and um, like production wise like it's just a bit more I mean yeah yes it's a very sort of clean very very well produced album but it's but I think that like, the song quality like is a little bit stronger like, especially Colin Moulding like who's three tracks on here like are uh, like I, I would say three of his very 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 best songs um, and like and like yeah like it's just a really sort of yeah bright sort of colourful sort of happy pop driven album so yeah for me um, another great record from XTC 1989 this one came out Now the next one at number five is probably going to be the biggest shock like off the list like I know like a lot of people I actually don't really care for this album too much but I have just always had a real soft spot for their final album Wasp Star here uh, so yeah I, I just think this is kind of XCC really sort of coming back like kind of like with a vengeance you know they've sort of like the guitars on this like are sounding like a lot louder than like probably like probably like the Black Sea album like to be honest they're sort of like they're rocking out a lot more like on it like but still writing absolutely amazing songs like the amount of sort of hooks and like counter hooks like sort of like weaved into like these songs like it's just like it's just quite mesmerizing and like I mean like there are some of my favorite XCC songs like on it I, I love Playground Stupidly Happy it's just such a sort of positive like upbeat song I really like uh Weird All Light Standing In For Joe like I've is a really good like color molding track there and for me, the closing song on here is possibly my favourite XCC song of all time, The Wheel and the Maple. I just think it's an incredible way to go out, like, ending, like, their career on, basically. Like, they've not done, like, anything together, like, since this record came out in the year 2000. Which is a bit off a shame, but, you know, like, if this is going to be the last XCC record, which it most probably is, this is, for me, a great, great way to end their career on. Wasp Star comes in at number five. How can we feed love all the farm boys? Wait! Okay. 
Okay, and there we're another one at number four, which probably a lot of people would be surprised to see this high up the list because among XTC fans even, this is an album which often like doesn't really get much off a look in. But I've gone for Mama from 1983. So this was the first of their sort of like their like um, studio band sort of albums. Like they weren't touring like by this time, like they were sort of um, focused like on like basically making like good records, like rather than trying to make songs like to produce live. And like it really shows like on this record because the sort of like the way they go from style to style like is like quite like interesting. Like I mean it sort of starts with like beating of hearts, this very sort of eastern like influence song, like into like Wonderland, sort of a little slice of like 80s synth pop and then into like Love of the Farm Boys Wages, this sort of um the sort of like sort of acoustic sort of country folk song and then like Great Fire, the sort of um ELO-ish like sort of like um again like just a great pop song there and like again I just love the way it goes through lots of different styles like in like, the albums like ten songs like it's still it's it's still bad it should be quite sprawling but also very concise as well like which is what I really like about Mama here. So yeah another really underappreciated record like from XTC um yeah comes in number four. Okay, so now we're into the top three, and I would say these three are probably the ones which are often like batted about as being XCC's best albums. Like usually, like on like these lists, like which I see, like it tends to be like one of these three albums which comes in at number one, and like and like definitely for good reason, like I would say because because all three of these are like sublime masterpieces. But this is the order which I have chosen. So um, at number three, we've got their fourth album, 1980s Black Sea here. So this was kind of, I would say, the kind of pinnacle of XTC's early sort of like touring, touring sort of like phase, you know. Like, um, this is kind of like the album like where sort of drums and wires, for me, was sort of trying to be kind of thing, you know. Like, I mean, like the songwriting quality has just sort of like gone up like another notch, like lyrically. Like it's just it's just a very sort of interesting album, like lots of different like ideas explored in here, but it's still very melodic and very poppy like as well. Like but there are also moments like where the band kinda like just like really shine, like um, especially stuff like No Language in our lungs and like Teddy Chambers sort of showcase travels in Nikon and um, like the closing song. Um, and like yeah, they still managed to pump out great pop singles such as Gemmels and Majors and Sergeant Rock is on here like as well. So yeah, one of their most sort of consistently pleasing albums, Black Sea, um, yeah, comes in at number three. Okay, and now at number two on my list is probably XTC's most popular album, like the most celebrated work. It's in their 1986 album Skylock in here. Now I would say this was a kind of grower like of an album for me because if you'd asked me to do this probably about say six months ago, I doubt this would have been in the top five possibly. Um because I always thought that like, it started off amazing but it just sort of gradually got like a little bit weaker like as the album went on. However, just recently, like, I've been really sort of, like, digging, like, this album, like, you know, like, the fact that it is a sort of a sort of concept al album, album, like, a song cycle, like, through, like, someone's life. Tom Rungren, like, who, like, produces, like, had, like, a real, like, sort of, like, um, a real sort of, like, knack, like, for coming up, like, with, like, this great, like, chat listing, like, this sort of, like, the seamless collection, like, of, like, songs, and, like, yeah, it just really flows out like, so well, like, this album. Plus, there are some incredible highlights, you know, stuff like, uh, Grass, The Meeting Place, Place. That's really super, super girl. Season cycle, earn enough for us. Another satellite, you know, like they all for me rank among XCC's very, very, very best songs. So yeah, uh, Skylocking like has to um, like come in at number two for me. And um, yeah, like absolute masterpiece here from 1986. <laughs> But now we have reached number one, my personal favourite XTC album. Uh, this one, I probably think for me, will always have a sort of sentimental place because it was the first XTC record which I ever bought. I kind of bought it like on like a whim, like not really knowing like what to expect. However, pretty much as soon as I put it on, I like, put it on that, or put it on like the turntable. We we got like into like Runaways and that. I was just sort of like taken away like by like the music of it. So that would be the album. English Settlement, their 1982 album. This is kind of, again, it's a transitionary record like, for the band. Like, you know, like they were just sort of finishing like their touring like, career. Like Andy Partridge like, was like, so like, I think like around this time, um, like going through a lot of like mental difficulties. Like, so he really wasn't keen to sort of like keep on touring. And that does show like on 
my album by the sort of like sprawling nature like of this album like um album like a lot of like these tracks like really like right really weren't designed like for like the stage like stuff like yacht dance and english roundabout you know like, you know you know these are sort of pure like studio creations like whether there are some other great moments of just a band like rocking out stuff like ball and chain no thugs in our house and like down in the cockpit snowman there's just so much really good like sort of like um um like playing like on it like lyrics is um writing like very sort of like topical but also quite abstract like quite like emotionally deep lyrics like as well and then it's just so catchy like as well like as well and um, it's just like melodic and the production really shines through as well i believe it's Hugh Padgham like was producing this album so yeah this really just kind of like is everything was great about XCC really sort of coming together like on like one album um, so yeah that would be an um, English settlement for me my number one choice so yes I hope you have enjoyed this list my ranking of XTC's 14 studio albums so yes I would be quite interested to know what your order would be like I always do like reading like people's lists simply because they are like always like so different like everyone like all XTC fans generally have like diff generally have like a different opinion like as about like what like their favourite is like or like what like the best work is like but I think we all kind of agree that they had an absolutely incredible run like of albums definitely one of the most consistently great but also like really like underrated like underappreciated bands like off all time there so yes i hope you have enjoyed the list and i will see you all next time for the next video goodbye <laughs>